broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Lauren Cranford, and I'm on the marketing team here at Medici. Medici is a secure messaging app that allows veterinarians to chat with their clients remotely. During the webinar, feel free to ask questions in the question tab on the GoToWebinar panel, and we will answer as many as possible at the end of the webinar. With that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Aaron Smiley, who will be presenting today's webinar. Thank you, Lauren. Appreciate everybody uh, taking time out of their day. What we're gonna try to do today with the webinar is talk about virtual care, how to specifically use Medici in virtual care and make it as practical as possible. Like Lauren said, feel free to send any kind of messages that you want or questions. I'm gonna to try to save, I'm gonna get done in about 30 minutes and then we'll save the end of that time for questions if you have them, um, but we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, Dr. Aaron Smiley, just a quick slide about myself. So I practice small animal medicine. Uh, I work for a consolidator vet corps. They're very nice people to work for. Uh, I am the vice president of the Indiana Veterinary Medical Association. We serve on the University of Illinois Alumni Board. And then also uh, have a company called DVM Mentoring. And it's a think tank where we're trying to solve some of the uh, difficult problems in veterinary medicine. And right now uh, we're working on a technology to be able to match mentors and mentees. So that's just a little bit about myself. Um, as an overview, what we want to in the talk today as far as the definition of virtual, uh, virtual care concerns that a lot of veterinarians have, myself included, um, we're going to take a telemedicine inventory and what that looks like in regards to how are you currently practicing telemedicine even if you're not using a specific technology like Medici, odds are that you're already practicing uh, virtual care to some degree. And then lastly, we're going to talk about integration. By way of definition, uh, for today's talk, we're going to specifically discuss everything inside of a VCPR. There's lots of conversation in regards to virtual care and telemedicine. Medici is a very, very nice platform because it's VCPR compliant in the regards that I, as the practitioner, get to control who I interact with. So I don't have to interact with people um, that are not clients and or patients sending me a message and, and asking for help. If you would like to engage in that type of telemedicine, Medici can support that, but we would call that like teletriage. For today's purposes, we're gonna be strictly talking about virtual care. And every time I say virtual care, uh, know that I'm talking about inside of a VCPR. So all the examples that I give and all of the uh, uh, things that we talk about are VCPR compliant. All right, telemedicine inventory. So if you're sitting there going, I'd like to get engaged with virtual care. I wanna see um, you know, if that's something that I wanna take on as far as a new aspect of my practice. Uh, first, what I want you to do is think to yourself as far as how are you currently uh, engaging in telemedicine. Uh, I've given this talk a couple times and I always go back to James Harriet because when virtual care and telemedicine came on three or four or five years ago as an issue uh, in veterinary medicine, I thought, I wonder how far back we can trace this. And sure enough, in the fictional book, uh, James Harriet practiced telemedicine. Uh, there was a farmer that called him up and had a question about a dairy cow. So the, uh, the, the client asked James over the phone, uh, what should I do? And James asked the farmer to describe the problem. Well, he says, the udder is inflamed, the milk is a little bit flaky. James says, it sounds like mastitis. And he instructed the farmer on what to do and then let the farmer know that he would come back or he would come out the next morning. James Harriet was practicing telemedicine. That was virtual care. He diagnosed the problem remotely over the telephone and then he gave uh, a di he diagnosed it, and then he gave uh, instructions to the farmer on what to do. That's telemedicine, that's virtual care. The nice thing about how we are practicing today is that we have access to so much more technology. James Harriet, he just had the telephone. We have a whole lot more. So are you practicing, currently practicing telemedicine? Uh, odds are you are to some degree, what we're gonna talk about in the integration is Medici gives us the ability then to monetize that interaction. It's a good thing. 
So again, just to reiterate, when I came out into practice, I was using the telephone. Um, I graduated from the University of Illinois in 2007. The iPhone, uh, the smartphone came online pretty quickly after that. And then my telemedicine went from talking uh, to the owner about the colicking horse at 6 p.m. and having her describe to me what was going on. It went from that, then it went to this. So before I adopted Medici, this is just iMessage. And as you can see, this is a real case that I have. And it's, it's from a friend, a family friend. And you as practitioners probably get this all the time. Friends and family are sending you texts, uh, knowing what to do about their, I mean, just, hey, can I do this with the dog? This is what's going on, what should I do? So if you read that, she says, I'm having a very bad day, and now this, I need your advice, B, that's her dog, ate and vomited apart, but not all the hard plastic coin. She said, I found the tiny piece, it's sharp, and then vomited spots with some chewed up in it, but I can't be sure that it's all in there, she never does this, what do I watch for? So I responded to her in, in pretty good time, and I said, oh, I'm sorry, watch for more vomit and let me know if she keeps throwing up. She said, okay, thank you. And that was the end of the conversation. That type of virtual care with friends and family is painless. That's not typically how it goes. It's typically not that short and concise. So let me take you to this next case. So again, this is telemedicine before, or virtual care before Medici, and this is a friend of a friend. So now you can watch the timestamps on Medici uh, right there at the top. It says Wednesday, January 4 at 7.22 a.m. So now this is a friend of a friend who has my cell phone number and she wants virtual care. She wants remote care. Uh, razor had diarrhea. It's pretty common. Didn't feed him last night. He had diarrhea at 12.30. So then I say back to her, try a small amount of food and see how he handles it. And then I give her the uh, thumbs up, which means I prefer to get my kids on the bus right now than text you about your dog. But I do have a VCPR. Um, she is a friend of a friend. She had a cell phone number. I didn't really feel like I had a whole lot uh, of choice. So now she asks for more um, clarification, how much. Well, then she goes, and you guys have all experienced this. You're going to laugh at me, but I got on the internet to read about diarrhea. Oh my heaven, she says. They act like the dog is going to die or has a serious disease. And you and I know that diarrhea can range the gamut. It can be extremely benign, and most of it is, but it can be severe as well if it's indicating a, a, another disease. So she is now emotionally getting wound up, and I say, oh yeah, you're right, I am laughing. Okay, then the timestamp, now the next day, January 5th, 9.30, all razors doing much better, the diarrhea, uh, thank you. So we go to the next one, now January 6th, oh no, she says the diarrhea is back. All right, so let's put him on a bland prescription diet, I'm a nice guy, she lives on the way home. We wanna offer good customer service, so I said I can drop the food off, okay? Uh, she says, well, I'll come to your house. I don't want you to come by my house. Um, all right, so we keep going. Uh, what time should we expect you? Okay, now she starts to complain, if you can read that. Why is our dog so high maintenance? And uh, then you can read the next one that she says, tis the season to hand over your money. She's complaining about the cost when all my professional services are done for free. Height of irritation for me as the practitioner. I know that she, her reality is that it's expensive and it is. My reality is I'm giving away tons of professional service and she doesn't even appreciate that. That's pretty commonplace in veterinary medicine. Now we fast forward to July 4th at 3.45 p.m. And uh, where I live in Indiana, that is a holiday. Uh, but she's got an emergency, so she's going to send me a text. And she has my phone number, so she's going to send me a text. We just got home, let Razor out, and he threw up, uh, threw the ball from a retriever like six times. He just started puking. He's puking four different times. He involuntarily pooped while he walked. And this dog is a deep chested Labrador, a pretty uh, athletic Labrador. So when an owner gives me a history like that, I'm like, I don't know. Could be serious, right? There's a lot of different things. First thing that pops to my mind is does the dog have GDV? Does she need to get to an emergency clinic right away? I have a responsibility to the dog. I'm super, super frustrated. All right. And then all of a sudden she says, oh, it stopped. He's fine. And she wants to speculate as far as what happened. Again, I'm getting no monetary compensation for this. And I think that she just kind of bluffed me or she greatly overreacted. Ugh, super frustrating. Don't worry, it's still July 4th. And now it's 11.28 at night. 
She just wants to give me an update. Just got home, he's acting completely fine. Go ahead and save that for tomorrow morning. But of course, with my text messaging, I can't readily turn it on and off. And that's one of the beauties with Medici is you can turn it on and off. But this, I can't, right? I want to get text messages from my kids and from my brothers and from all my friends that are doing fun things. I don't necessarily want to get work mixed in with that. So super, super frustrating. October 9th. Okay, so again, just a little bit of repeat. And now she wants to know as far as now she wants to schedule. Oh my gosh. So I just turned in the room. So you can see that offering telemedicine without the advantage of a technology quickly, quickly, quickly gets out of hand. And you might've experienced that. So when we can incorporate something like with Medici, all of a sudden we get control and we can monetize these interactions. My guess is a high, high percentage of veterinarians on the call are already practicing some sort of, it may not be an iMessage, it might be over Facebook Messenger, it might be Snapchat, it might be uh, any, any other type of an email, it might be email. But my guess is that most, if not all of us, are practicing some type of remote care that resembles what I just showed you. Now, veterinarians have concerns, and rightfully so. Medical malpractice is probably one of the highest questions, or one of the most frequent questions that I get. Ah, I'm worried about engaging in virtual care uh, because there might be, uh, I feel like I'm more vulnerable if I don't see that dog in person. Now, what I'll tell you is that more accurate information gives you, as a practitioner, the ability to make better decisions. So if we'll agree that most, if not all of us, are already practicing some level of remote care, if you had picture, if you had audio, if you had a video, you could make an even better decision for that pet and that patient about what to do next. And that might be, go to the emergency clinic right now. Now, the next pictures that I'm gonna show you are a little bit rough. I started out in equine practice. These, uh, these pictures, the, the pictures on the right, same horse, and I just want to give you some perspective. So that's the front left leg of a horse just right by the shoulder. Obviously, the uh, picture on the left is the intestines hanging out, and that's the right side of the horse. The horse on with your screen with the intestines hanging out, that horse had to be euthanized. The other horse with the shoulder cut did really, really well. And the reason that I put up those pictures is because they were described by the owner in, the, in a very, very similar way over the phone. Horse has a really bad cut on its side. Can you come out and fix it? Well, the horse with the intestines, nope, I can't fix that. The horse with the, the flesh wound, yeah, I can fix that. Now, if, now this was pre-smartphone, if the owner would have been able to send me a picture or a video, I could have been able to uh, get a handle on uh, what was going on a lot easier than just a description from the client. So again, when you're thinking about malpractice, think about the fact that if you incorporate video and audio and live chat, if you want to, all you're doing is giving yourself more information to be able to make a better medical decision. With medical malpractice, last point on this one, you're the veterinarian. And you get to decide as far as how much uh, latitude you want to give people. Uh, with what kind of aggression do you practice your medicine? Some people are more conservative, other people are more aggressive. None of that changes with remote care, with virtual care. None of that changes. If you get a dog that they send you a picture of bloody diarrhea and you go, whoa, that dog needs to be seen right now, then that's going to be your advice. So know that all virtual care does is enhances your ability to make a good medical decision. It doesn't make you any more liable. In my opinion, it makes you less liable. Medical records in the state of Indiana, we have to include our correspondence in the medical record. When I'm sending text messages, it's very difficult and cumbersome to get that correspondence into the medical record. With Medici, it's quite easy. We're gonna show you that and, and somebody from Medici can, if you wanna do it like a, they can run you through all the technology that's very, very intuitive, but those um, correspondence can be exported as a PDF and drop right into your software. So for us, the medical record aspect was very, very beneficial. Yep, so that interaction, first one, it was easy. It didn't make it into the medical record because it was before uh, we had Medici. Work-life balance, and this is, this is what we're all after, especially I would say as far as um, maybe the generation younger than me or people 10 years my junior, looking for work-life balance. 
And we talk about work-life balance, the veterinary shortage, uh, I've managed two clinics and we're looking for uh, veterinarians to come work for us. Me being able to give new associate veterinarians the ability to have a flexible schedule very much appeals. So if you're an employer out there and you're thinking, gosh, how can I set myself apart? What would happen if you incorporated virtual care into your practice? And then that was part of the offering to your new associate is, hey, you don't have to be in the clinic to generate revenue. We've got an app called Medici and you can generate revenue and have a flexible work schedule or even a little bit of a flexible work schedule. Our goal in our clinic is to see, uh, can we get rid of Saturday mornings and continue to have more revenue? I don't know, but that's what we're after. I'd love to watch my kids volleyball game uh, you know, instead of having to be in the clinic. And I love my job. Uh, clinicians are very, uh, not very, but loss of revenue because uh, typically you can charge whatever you want on Medici for uh, the virtual care. I usually do half of what the sick exam is uh, to try to get it to appeal to clients. And uh, people say to me, ah, Aaron, that's great. You're doing a half of a sick exam. If you'd have those people come in, then you get a full one, you're losing money. We use a lot of Medici, we use Medici a lot with rechecks. And right now I was talking to um, somebody as far as in the VMG groups and the numbers that they had was about 30% of rechecks are actually realized. So there's a lot of untapped revenue just in rechecks. So to say Mrs. Smith with the itchy dog, hey, instead of coming back in in two weeks, you know what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this more convenient and less expensive, we're gonna use Medici. That's not losing revenue, because most of the time, only 30% of the time, people are coming back for those rechecks anyway. Lastly, as far as in the uh, area of concerns is client resistance. And it's, it's true, we're introducing something new and, and that's not commonplace for veterinarians. Uh, usually what we do is we wait for people to ask for things. Hey, my dog's sick, can you help? Hey, the horse isn't, uh, the horse is lame, can you make that better? And, and we step into that problem and, and come along owners in that problem. In, with virtual care, we're introducing something new. And so there is a little bit of a finesse as far as how you introduce this uh, to clientele. And a lot of times what I think about it is when Steve Jobs brought on the iPod onto the market, nobody was clamoring for an iPod. And what you, you know, the famous quote as far as people don't know what they want until you show it to them. And that's been our experience with virtual care. The clients that use it, engage with it, they like it. They're like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. More convenient, less expensive. Yep, Dr. Smiley, every time. So know that you're going to have to have those conversations with your team, with your reception, um, with your technicians and your nurses about what this looks like and what you want to do with virtual care so that everybody's on the same page because you're not going to have clients, at least today, asking you how they can pay for remote care. Uh, We've done 1,300 cases, over 1,300 cases, but this little graph is from the 1,300 cases that we use just in the clinics that, that we do, and it fits along pretty much like what I would suspect that I see in practice, 40% when you're kind of looking at that, 40% of virtual care is skin and then GI, so skin and diarrhea, and that's, I, I'm, I've never run the numbers through the software, what, we, what our diagnosis is in the clinic. Uh, but I would say that it pretty much mirrors that. So just kind of an interesting, there's gonna be more data. We're gonna go out to Colorado State for their uh, innovation summit, and we're gonna present more data, um, but that's just a quick chart, but that wasn't surprising to me at all. All right, so now we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty and the time that we have left, and this will take about, we'll see if we can wrap it up in 10 minutes, so then if anybody has questions, you're welcome to ask those. All right. Four big ways that I see for integrating virtual care, and you'll probably think of three other ways and do them better than me, but this is, uh, this is what we're gonna talk about for the remaining time. All right, medical recheck. So we talked about that, more convenient, less expensive. That's how I get Mrs. Smith to go, all right, Dr. Smiley, keep talking. I like what you're saying. Post-surgical, we cook in or we add uh, into our surgical fees a free Medici recheck and it avoids a lot of trips to the emergency clinic, and then it also really, really bonds uh, the client to the clinic. Uh, the client loves to get updates during the, the procedure with pictures, they love that, um, and then they also love the ability to be able to send a message to the doctor after hours, we choose to use it after hours, 
to say, hey, there's swelling, or even the next day, hey, there's swelling, um, what should we do? Wellness plans, we don't, we don't currently use wellness plans at our clinic, but if you are a clinic that does, I think that virtual care and Medici would fit right into a wellness plan where you would charge a subscription for the client to be able to send you unlimited texts or however you want to set that. And I'll show you an example of a pseudo wellness plan, but we don't do wellness plans at our, our practice. And then lastly, referrals. Um, they're not done that often, but when, they're, um, when we do use them, they're very, very valuable. We get to keep a lot of the residual uh, testing in hospital and our clients don't have to drive to a major metropolitan area. Uh, the, our main practice is probably about 45 minutes outside of Indianapolis and there's lots of cornfields between downtown Indianapolis and, and, our, and the, our clinic. And so our clients appreciate the convenience to be able to talk to a specialist and then the specialist can charge uh, through Medici directly to the client. So let's go through these real quickly. First one is, so medical rechecks. This is a dog, and we're just gonna ride through slides. All right, so this is a dog that we set up because the, the dog came into the clinic and had a pain. I perceived it as oral pain. Dog had a really rough mouth, but the owner wasn't for sure that I was right, and that's okay. Lord knows I'm wrong plenty of the time. So I said, well, let's do a recheck on Medici, and if anything changes, you can reach out, and if you can send me a video of the pain, I'd love that as well, because of course the dog wasn't showing signs of pain in the room. So you can see what I wrote there, and then I'm gonna show you a quick, okay, so we're going to the next one. Good morning, um, update on Luke. He kept screaming and whimpering last night while he slept, and I couldn't get any footage. So he was in our bed as usual trying to cuddle us. I said, thanks so much, is he willing to eat? So I'm gonna ask her a question, a couple questions. Um, right now he's relaxing in a fluffy dog bed. Now, I'm getting compensated for this. So unlike the previous one that we saw of the friend of the friend, this I'm getting paid for. Uh, thanks for the update. And you can see on Medici with the two checks, it's just a technical, it's like a WhatsApp as far as one check is seen, two checks is set and seen. So again, she sends me a cute little picture. Um, he's trying not to use or stand on his right front leg. Okay, and I think that's a picture that I couldn't get to load. Um, Oh, no, no, no. That's a picture of his blood work that I, I said to her. Um, okay, so then this is just when it said loading. So we use IDEX. I just took a picture of a picture. It comes through. The cameras that we use now are, are incredible. All right. uh, I said to her, her in blue, so that's me. Has the whimpering screaming gotten better or worse since you started the pain medication? Find it difficult uh, to cut the pills the proper size, but I can manage. Cut them up. All right, so we go through that. Sometimes a pill color cutter helps. And so I'm an, engaging with her, and you can see the timestamp really quickly. It's a lot easier for me to text her back than to talk to her on the phone. Um, a lot of your staff could take care of this kind of a conversation, but still, this is very, very low stress. And you can see down on the bottom where it says add colleagues. You can add a colleague and you can add one of your staff members and they could answer these questions if you uh, were in a room or something. She said, I haven't heard any yelping since last night. I did startle him earlier and give him his pills. Okay. I said, I'm glad that he's better. I worry that his mouth might be the source of pain. Let me know if he starts to cry out again. Okay. So she brought, bought the pill color, cutter. I say, good job. Okay. And that's where it ends. So the dog got less painful on the pain medication. And then lastly, again, so you can see the $25. I made money on the consult. You can charge whatever you want. If you're like, oh, X money, you're not charged enough at 25. You can charge whatever you want to do. That's just where we're at right now. Next is we're going to do post-surgical. This is pretty intuitive. So here's the picture. She says uh, we did some abdominal surgery. I would assume it's a spay, but I don't know. Make sure that Aurora's stitches look okay. Thanks for sending the picture. And then I can ask a question. So again, with the liability, I don't, and I'm going to show you one here. So this is a real zoom in. And I just wanted to show you how much detail that you can get. And I know it's on a webinar and there's 15 computers and lots of internet, but man, the picture, the cameras that we have right now on our phones are incredible. So you can really get a lot of detail, but I didn't like the fact that I couldn't appreciate the swelling. So I just asked her, take a picture from further away. And so she did. And that again is you're still the veterinarian, you're in charge. You can ask her for whatever you want as far as the picture. And if she can't supply that picture, then you can tell her, hey, come on into the clinic. I can't appreciate what's going on. Okay. And I have sympathized with her. I know it's not easy, and it's not. So now she took one from the side. All right. That angle, I feel better. I'm going to ask normal doctor questions. Depressed, any of those things happening? No, she's eating like doing it herself. Okay. 
try to keep her quiet. Most of the time that swelling is secondary because the owners can't keep the dog quiet. We know they hate the e-collar or the, you know, the pillow. So just keep the dog quiet. That's done. Now that was a free consult because it was part of the surgical, but again, avoided a trip to the emergency clinic for that owner and really relieved the frustration for that owner as well. All right, wellness plan. We don't do wellness plans, and I'm gonna show you a long video. Kathy is a very, very sweet woman. She's a client, she doesn't mind us using her name. And what I want you to do as we scroll through, she had a dog muffin that was basically in hospice. Um, and Kathy sent me tons of texts, and Kathy's super sweet. She's gonna get one time fee of $25. And if you look at all the questions that she's asking me and all the pictures, it probably was worth more than that. And if I had to do it over again, I probably would have charged it different. So the illustration here is just that you could very easily use this for wellness plans. So that was the one time that I charged her $25. And she's just going to ask a whole bunch of questions because the dog was on a lot of chronic medication. It was failing. Um, but Kathy wanted to see it through with the dog. And so it was, um, it was very, very nice that she could be in touch with her veterinarian through the whole thing. Referral. It's kind of an interesting one. Now, referrals, if you say at the beginning, you're like, hey, Aaron, I thought that you were going to tell me that everything was VCPR compliant. And this is still VCPR compliant because there are three people that are in this conversation. And those are just records. All right. So it is myself, the doctor with the VCPR. There's a referring veterinarian who's remote. And then there's the client. And I've asked this question as far as AVMA, and we've discussed it. But this is still constitutes uh, an active VCPR. Now, the responsibility is on me that there's appropriate care. If anything were to happen, it's my liability, not Dr. Marquez, because I hold the VCPR, but this is still appropriate. And what I like so much about this kind of referral is that I have an internist or an oncologist that has skin in the game, because as you can see, so I asked, I gave some history, the owner is privy to this entire conversation, and then Dr. Marquez, she goes through and she diagnoses. Uh, diagnoses what's going on. She gives a great uh, overview. And um, it really, really helps me out as the primary care veterinarian uh, to have the backup and know that the referral, uh, the referring better, uh, the specialist has skin in the game because she's going to charge at the, the end of this whole thing. And I, as the uh, generalist, don't get ambiguous answers. I get actionable plan. And I really like that as far as when I'm interacting uh, with the people that are 10 times smarter than me, that they're really in it with me versus calling up a hotline and interacting with an internist that's super smart and very bright. But I tend to get uh, a list of differentials at that point. And that for me, isn't as beneficial as this. My client loves it uh, because she doesn't have to go uh, and spend a significant uh, amount of money. Um, so, if you can see, I thought that maybe I put it up there where Dr. Marquez shows that she charges, but I just want you to look at the end of this one. Okay, one more. So you can see at the bottom of this, Dr. Marquez closes out and then the other consult summary is mine. I didn't charge the patient for any of this, um, but if it were something that needed blood work or a skin scrape or anything like that, I have these animals still in my hospital and I can send those results to the specialist. So I make money on all those. I keep the animal in the hospital and keep money on all of those laboratories. So those are the four big ways uh, that we are using Medici. And that is it. So if anybody has any questions, they're welcome to ask. Um, and if not, I hope you guys have a great day. Hey, everyone. This is Lauren again with Medici. Uh, we did have some questions come through. If there are any more, feel free to ask them in that question section. Um, wanted to run through a few with you, Dr. Smiley. The first being, how do you determine how much to charge for a consult? Right now, what we're doing is we're saying half of what a sick exam is, uh, but you can do whatever you want. Uh, you can you can make it. You can even change it as far as during a consult. If you wanted to change the amount, it's just one of the settings that's very intuitive inside of Medici. Uh, but we're trying to encourage people to get onto the platform. So we're doing half of what a sick exam is. Okay. And then how do you pay your associates for virtual care? The associates that we have right now are using Medici um, during office hours. So there's no additional compensation for those associates. 
uh, because they have Medici turned on when they're in the clinic and then they turn it off when they leave. You could, if you wanted to do uh, after hour stuff, you could compensate per, um, per consult. And inside Medici, it's very easy to see how much money uh, each doctor generates in revenue and how many calls they're doing or how many consults that they're doing. So you could do like a pro sal situation or you could set a, an hourly rate uh, to say, hey, if you do virtual care after hours, we're gonna pay you this much additional. So it's very flexible uh, in what you do. But right now, I do it after hours as a, um, as a service to our clientele. So I don't make any additional money, but it's great for the clinic. So there's residual benefit for me, but you could compensate your associates however you'd like. So someone is asking if you could go over how you, quote, integrate the specialists. Oh, yeah. So it's very, in let me see. Here we go. It's super easy. And we're actually using this. Let me see if I can come back. Oh, that's the best. Hold on, I can do this. If you look, and I think this will probably be the easiest shot, maybe, of the Atacali. So at the bottom of each, um, let's see if it has it here. Yeah. Okay, so, and this is a little bit older. Medici came out with a great new update. So you see down at the bottom, it says to all or to colleagues. And what you can see over there is Dr. Marquez has MM, so she has her initials. It, it's with one tap. And so I have those specialists in my care team with one tap. I bring Dr. Marquez in, and now she can see all of the previous texts, everything. It is brilliant. We also use that to bring in our colleagues inside of the practice. So I have a nurse team that's set up. And so all with almost every case, I bring in the nurse team so that they can watch and see what's going on because I'm dispensing medication and they can just keep abreast. So it is a super slick functionality and it's just as easy as connecting with whatever specialist you'd like to. How do you introduce this to clients when they are used to sending pictures via email for free? Yeah, so there, that's a big one. That's a tough one. So two things. What I say to them initially is I say, mm, in the state of Indiana, the governor needs me to get all of this information into the medical record. It's difficult to get that into the medical record in our current frame. And you might go, oh, Dr. Smiley, all that's already getting put into the medical record because our software allows the emails to get directly pushed. All right. We didn't have that functionality. So most of what we were doing was texting. So that was a good argument for me to the client. The second one, if your email already integrates completely into the software, is to um, say you can still do free virtual care with the nursing team. But if you need the doctor, that's going to cost. And uh, our doctors are busy, and our doctors want to provide great customer service. So if you have a question that one of the nurses can answer, don't worry. They'll still be on the Medici platform, and you don't get charged with that. But if you have a problem, we can probably save you money by interacting with the doctors on Medici as well, and the nurses can loop the doctor in really, really quickly. So for me, it's not about taking anything away from the client. It's about giving them an additional service um, so they can still interact with the nurses for free. But now when we interact with the doctors, it's going to cost, and it's actually going to provide a better service. Can you walk us through the process if you need to prescribe medication? Yeah, so prescribing medication, uh, very straightforward. Uh, you're going to say, uh, pick this up at the pharmacy, or if you have an online pharmacy, then we'll send it to you. Um, so it would just be as far as if you were on a phone conversation with somebody and said, yep, I'll get that ready for you. I'll have the receptionist get that and have that ready for you at the front desk. I'll call that into a pharmacy or I'll send it to you from our online pharmacy. So um, it's, in, in that regard, it's, it's the same type of thing. Do you limit the length of a conversation or limit the number of topics owner can cover in a single consult? It seems like clients could abuse the system to cover a dozen, oh, by the way, questions when it's supposed to just be a quick recheck. How do you control that? Absolutely. It's a valid point. You control that virtually the same way that you can control that in the exam room. So we all know the clients that we have, Mrs. Smith, she'll talk your ear off. 
Well, eventually you have to say, hey, Mrs. Smith, I got to step out to surgery or I got to get going. It's 7.05, right? So you're going to do that via text. And maybe for people that are more, that interact, you know, if you're 10 years younger than me, you're texting all the time and you know, as far as it really feels very conversational. If you don't always feel conversational in text messaging, you might just get more accustomed to doing that. It's like, okay, what's the appropriate etiquette? But I treat it just like an exam room. So if somebody comes into an exam room and they have three questions or they have 10 questions, I'm okay with that. Now, if it gets into just abuse in the sense of no, well, then I can either push another fee or I can address it. I don't want to be passive aggressive, but a lot of times I am. I don't want to be passive aggressive. I just need to address it. Hey, Mrs. Smith, this sounds like a new problem. I'm going to go ahead and push another charge. Feel free to do as many rechecks as you want. So it's the same, it's the exact same emotional uh, uh, smarts, emotional maturity that you have in the exam room, you're going to use virtually. Do you feel that this helps keep women in the profession if they are pregnant, for example? Good. I don't, I'm not, I don't, I think that it, I think that the more that we do this, the more people that are a lot smarter than me are going to figure out how to make something that we're already doing become an asset to the entire profession. So yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think it benefits, I'm never going to be pregnant and it benefits me. If I can sit and watch my kids volleyball game and do Medici instead of being in at the clinic every other Saturday, that's a win for me. And I'm never going to be pregnant. So I think that this is that the potential is there to be to be able to definitely improve the work life balance and 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 to be able to be compensated for the professional service um, that we offer our clients all the time. Okay, just a few more questions here. Are there times allotted in the daily schedule of associates to answer Medici calls, or are they just answering those as their time allows? They're answering them as time allows, because one of the things that's beautiful about texting is that it's asynchronous. So if I get a telephone call, I got to sit there on the phone and I can't, because uh, the client gets a little bit worried that I don't know what I'm doing. If I'm texting, I can text, I can pause for five minutes, 15 minutes, even two hours before I get back to that client. And it's not socially perceived as being rude. That's just the beauty of asynchronicity uh, with the text messages. Now, if you're going to do a live video chat, that's like a phone call and you got to be there and going. Most, if not all of my clients do not want to do live video chat. They prefer to send a video versus them seeing me and me seeing them. They don't want to do that because they don't feel like they control it. So to make a long answer longer, we just cook it into our day. And if you think, gosh, dang, Dr. Smile, I don't know if I could do that. Ask yourself the question, how often are you texting with friends or family or asking and answering staff questions? I mean, you come out of that exam room, you've got two nurses that are standing right beside you. Hey, uh, Mrs. Smith is on the phone and she wants to know, can we change the dose of this Apoquil? Can we go back to twice a day or once a day? And you're processing that and you know who she is. So you're multitasking to the appropriate level all the time. Then it, it's just you incorporating this instead of just a whole bunch of this. So we do it, we don't block out any time. Okay, great. How do you know that, um, how, or how do clients know that you are texting them and it's not one of your staff members? Oh, boy, that's brilliant. That's right. We are, we, um, so I have a staff member that she takes care of. So I loop in my staff almost to every conversation. So my staff can make sure that I'm not missing anything. We don't let anybody text on the doctor's account. And because I think that it's very, very important since they can't hear my voice or see my ugly mug, I think it is very important that there is a level of integrity that exists because if I lose that trust with the client, it's like, oh, am I talking to a computer? Am I talking to my doctor? And I like that part about Medici is it putting the doctor directly in contact with the client. There's no, uh, it's not some kind of algorithm that's trying to diagnose the problem for the pet. The client will pay for the service because they don't want to ask Google, they want to ask their veterinarian. So we have a strict rule. Nobody is uh, allowed, I mean, just nobody does. It. And, and I can tell that to my clients with assurance that if you see a message that says from Dr. Smiley, that is me with my thumbs or my voice uh, sending you that message. 
All right. Well, the rest of the questions are very specific, so it might be better to take those offline. And we can definitely have one of our telemedicine consultants uh, follow up with you after this webinar. Um, with that being said, Dr. Smiley, would you advance to the next slide for me? Uh, I want to thank all of our current customers who joined today's webinar, uh, as well as anyone that's new to learning about Medici. If you want to learn more, you can go to this URL, go.medici.md slash smiley. And if you enter the show code webinar, uh, we will ensure that we know you were on the webinar today. Uh, and like I said, anyone with specific questions, we will be sure to get in touch and we will also follow up with a recording of this webinar in case you missed something or, or would like to rewatch it. So with that, any following comments, Dr. Smiley? No, nope. thanks everybody. I know everybody's busy. I appreciate you guys taking time out of your day. All right, thanks everyone.